How you doing, Brother John? You're welcome to my morning devotion. All right, so we're going to step back from the Luke Skywalker and Return of the Jedi because of the Scorpio King Nebula uh, Ares is because the light bearer of the scales of the Age of Aquarius is part of the planet Snoopy-Doo, Scooby-Doo. We can pr prophesy the future through horoscopes. I actually feel stupid or even watching that absolute blasphemy, but I figured to myself, <laughs> I, I need to step back from this this, 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 I have to step back. I need a bit of a, a, a spiritual rest. So I figured to myself this morning, we're going to be looking at the word P. All right. So I'm going to, I'll test and give you a two second testimony. I have struggled with every addiction imaginable to mankind. And one of them was a sex addiction. Okay. Since I was a young age, I've been, mean, um, you know, like the nightclub scene, the drug scene, the everything scene. Okay. I was the worst of the worst. Okay. And for years, decades, now I have found victory through Christ Jesus our Lord, the living God. His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through the knowledge of Him. Okay, you find that in Peter 1.3. So, I want to touch base on the P and how it's in the church. I'm not even going to use the word, because it's P. And everybody knows what I'm talking about, the lust of the eyes. And You know, I, I have struggled because I have, I have asked the Lord over, like, over the last the years I have, have been set free from this. I said, Father, why have you made women so smoking hot? Like, they are just gorgeous, and it, it drives me nuts. But, you know, the Lord has given me grace, and I'm pretty sure women have the same problem with men. God has engineered us with eyeballs. And, like, the opposite sex, sex is, um, you know, that's one thing I'm going to ask the Lord when I get to heaven. Why did you make women so beautiful? All right, so here it is here. No temptation. Okay, so we know here, 1 Corinthians, we're going to look at some articles, and we're going to look at the Bible today, but... The word of God living, dwelling within us gives us wisdom. Now, actually, let's do that first. So the smartest, wisest guy in the world. Well, Jesus was better than, than Solomon. Okay, but Solomon said the beginning of fear, the beginning of wisdom, and the beginning of knowledge is the fear of God. Now, are we to walk around like we're terrified of God? Oh, he's going to burn us with a magnifying glass. He just hates us. No, 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 no. We, People have a misunderstanding of the fear of God, okay? Well, we also know that in, what is that, Philippians, it says that we work out our salvation with fear and trembling. And we know that Jesus said, don't fear somebody that can kill your body, but fear the one that can send you into hell, eternity, okay? So there is a fear of God, but what is what is the fear of God? Well, here it is here. This is the analogy that I've come up with. This is my own personal one. One second. I just got up. My personal analogy is, I love cooking tortillas eh, on a stove all right on now the stove is my friend it cooks me tacos okay or or quesadillas now would i put my hand on that stove no i wouldn't put my hand on that stove because if i put my hand on the stove there is a consequence okay so why do you not go out and start murdering lying stealing cheating and adultery and breaking all of god's commandments there is a consequence to sin that's a fact Paul said it in Galatians 5.19, the acts of sinful nature are obvious. It's obvious. Sexual morality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, defections, action, defections, factions and envy, drunkenness and orgies, and the likes which I warned you about earlier, that those who live like this, if you are living like that, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Okay? All right. And I think I've pretty much participated in every single act of sinful nature. I tried to feed my, my flesh my whole life, okay? But I could never get satisfied, ever. It was always unsatisfying. You know, there was pleasure and sin for a season, okay, but it leads to death. It wasn't until I started living my life in obedience to the Lord, okay, in self-discipline, that I finally found peace. And the Lord has satisfied my desires and my flesh with, through His... Through living for the Lord, I have peace. Finally in my life, after 44 years, I finally have peace in my life and joy and happiness because I'm walking down the narrow path. And that's where the freedom is. Life and life more abundantly. When you're shackled with addictions, when you're shackled with alcoholism or drug addiction or, or pee or any of the addictions, you can't have peace. You can't because you can't satisfy it. But you can definitely get satisfied with the Lord. All right, where are we at here? So let's read a little bit of the article. And then, uh, all right, so here's a guy, Jeremy Wilde. 
Did I finish my... Okay, so the fear of the Lord. I wanted to finish that. So, uh, I think I said my piece on that. All right, here we go. 15 mind-blowing statistics about P in the church. 76 of all of 18, 24-year-old Christians' activity seek out P. Okay, this is 2016. This is an article. 71% of teens hide a line behind from their... Okay, let's go here. Let's just read some statistics. We'll read the Bible. It's going to be a quick video today. Like I said, I'm taking a break from the higgity boo bim bam bo. The Luke Skywalker is the the shickity boom bam bing. And because the nebula of the goddess Aquarius is shooting through the star of Capricorn, and because the age of the Aquarius means that it's a revival because it's the work week 54 on the Canadian firewall. I need a break. All right, so <laughs> here we go. All right, here we go. Okay. Notice here. One second. By the way, I'm going to do all my videos live, and um, I love it. There's like, like I think there's like 20 or 30 people that was watching my video live. Okay, here we go. What numbers show the research study primarily by the Barnard Group? All right, just go to the okay, number one. Over 4 million Americans are regular visitors to P. The average site lasts 6 minutes. Okay, there are 42 million P websites and total around 370 million. What? Around I haven't read this yet. I just looked up this is the first thing I found. 370 million pages. The P industry annual revenue is more than the what? NFL I didn't know this combined. That's the first time I've been reading this. All right, okay, let's go to number four. 47%, one second, families in the United States report that P is a problem in their home. P has increased mat mat maternal, maternal little, mar marital, marital, I'm not good with, with reading out loud, forgive me. In Infidelity rates more than 300%, okay. 11 is the average, what? Oh, father. If you have teenagers, you better be watching what they're watching, all right? 11 is the average that a child is first experienced P, 90%. Okay, number seven. 56 American, American divorces involve one party having obsessive interest in P. 70% of Christian youth... Pa now, listen to this. This is where we get into where my wheelhouse... The pastors. All right. He had at least one teen came to them, help dealing. All right. We're almost done. I want to get off the subject. It's such a diabolically satanic. But it's important that we look at it because it affects so many people. God created with eyeballs. Okay, we need to be talking about this. No, I'm going to ride, run from it. All right. 70% of Christian youth pastors report that they have at least one teen come to them, help in dealing with, okay, P. In the past 12 months, okay, 68% of church-going men, listen to this, listen to this. You think you're going to heaven if you're out there murdering somebody? Okay, how about stealing from your boss? How about lying and cheating and, and, and the rest of it? Okay, do you think you're going to heaven if you're habitually murdering somebody? Okay, no, you're not going to heaven. Okay, God has given us, it says, first of all, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end this video with grace. So, for an example, Titus 2.11, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men and women, teaching us to say no to ungodliness, okay, and worldly passions, and living self-controlled, upright, godly lives in this present age. We can't stand before God, okay, Christ Jesus our Lord, the, the, the judge of the world, okay, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Christ Jesus is our Lord. We can't stand behind in front of God and say, God, <clears throat> you created women way too hot. You created men with soul and peeling. They, they are just so beautiful. I had to indulge in pee. Okay, you, that won't stand up before Jesus. He's given us the spirit of the living God, filled with power of the Holy Ghost dwelling within us. Okay, that's a fact. We're going to get some Bible verses. All right. Number 10. 59% of pastors said that married men seek them help. For, okay. 33% of women aged 25 and under search. What is this? 33% of women aged 25 and under search for a P at least once per month. One second. That's the thought. Like, I was like, do women even struggle with the lust of the eyes? And apparently they do, because for men, it's almost impossible.
especially with with some the way the, the summertime. All right, twin twelve, twelve. Only thirteen percent of self-identified Christian women say they never watch P. Eighty percent of Christian women say have P. Okay, fifty-five percent of men and twenty-five percent of women say that they watch P at least once a month. Wow. 57% I'm like an enigma <laughs> you know I'm not saying I like I want to reiterate I struggle with the lust of the eyes every day I'm a guy all right but um, praise the Lord through the living God I have finally found uh, relief I'm gonna let's, let's click this off and I have not indulged in that but I'll tell you it says what is that that's um what is that Titus 3 5 and 6 he saved us not because of the righteous things we have done but by his mercy he saved us through the washing and rebirth and renewal of the holy spirit whom he poured out generously through christ jesus our lord okay so that washing and rebirth and renewal is through the water of the word we have to sanctify ourselves it's like the same as you go on a diet all right you go on a diet like i just lost somewhere around 50 to 60 pounds okay my first day on the diet i didn't lose any weight the same okay when i was indulging in sexual sin with the lust of the eyes I, my day one, I still had all of those images implanted in my mind. It was, it was almost diabolically dreams and all of Satan with his fiery arrows. It was so difficult for me at the beginning. For years, I struggled with like flashes of images coming into my eyes, okay? It wasn't until years afterwards, after the sanctification and rebirth and renewal and the washing of the Holy Spirit, like, it's very rarely that I have those images. They still come back, but very infrequently, okay? And, and in another 10 years from now, praise the Lord, I'll still be struggling with it. We have not arrived. The Apostle Paul said, what is that? Philippians 4, 3, 19, 3, 3, Philippians 4, 12, Philippians 3, forgive me. Philippians 3, Philippians 3, 12, forgive me. The Apostle Paul said, not that I have attained all this or have been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of Christ Jesus who took hold of me. Even the Apostle Paul, he's like, I haven't been made perfect, <laughs> but I keep fighting. And I'm Brother John and I have not, trust me on this one, I have not been made perfect, but I keep fighting. I fight. All right. It's great. He's given us this battle. All right. And we can fight through it. And he's given us all these tools, the word of God. All right. What is that? That's, that's, um. James 1 19 everyone should be quick to listen so to speak and so to anger for man's anger does not bring about the righteous life that God's desires all right so therefore get rid of all moral fil filth that's the one I wanted to say sorry therefore get rid of all moral filth and evil so prevalent humbly accept the planted word the implanted word planted within you okay that can save you you need to get the word of God living on the bible wake up in the morning and go to bed at night at least read one scripture if you can a lot of people can't memorize i memorize i've been gifted with this it's hard for me to read out loud so i i, I typically i recycle scriptures through my mind all all day all right okay where are we at here we're gonna read a couple okay so here it is here matthew 28 this is called the great commission that jesus says therefore go and make disciples of all nations baptizing in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit now, what's the very next word? We don't, a lot of these hyper grace heretics say, oh yeah, we just, we don't teach nothing that Jesus said, eh? That's the old covenant. <laughs> I know, it's hard. Now it says, commanding them, okay? Where is it? Okay, some translations say commanding. This one says, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I'm with you always. So th remember, this is after he rose from the dead. Okay, this is the last thing he said to his disciples before he went to the right hand of the Father. He says, listen up. Go, make disciples of all nations, baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them all that I have commanded you. So that kind of blows away all that hyper-grace heretics that are blaspheming God. All right, now remember, they're coming to you as sheep, as in uh, sheep as it would in really the rabbit's walls they're going to distort and twist the bible into some sort of lollipop christmas age of aquarius message all right there we go so jesus sat down his disciples it's called sermon on the mount we're going to look at this for a few seconds matthew 5 don't worry we're going to end this message with a lot of hope there's a lot of hope for you every day is a fresh day do not Think that I have come to abolish the law and the prophets? I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. 
For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Has everything been accomplished? Has heaven and, heaven and earth been passed away? Are we in the new kingdom? <laughs> no, we are still fighting the good fight of faith, okay? Therefore, listen to this. Whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But, listen to this. Whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Do you want to be called great in the kingdom of heaven? Do what Jesus commanded us and teach others to do the same thing. All right. We're going to go. This is, I got two more slides. Here it is here. We're going to read it. Now, the, the Word of God cuts, and I am not the Holy Spirit. All right, that's a fact. I'm not the one to convict sin. I'm reading the Bible. What is it? Uh, for the Word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword, penetrate, divide, soul and spirit, joints and marrow, judging the thoughts and the attitude of the heart. Okay, where is that? Hebrews 4.12. You have said it was... You have heard that what is said, you shall not commit adultery. Okay, this is Jesus. Just using the Bible. But I say to you, these if, if you can hear, hear what I'm saying, this is what Jesus is warning, okay? That anyone who looks at a lust at a woman lustfully, intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of your members than your whole body be thrown into hell. There is an eternal consequence for murdering somebody. There is an eternal consequence for lying, stealing, cheating. And there is an eternal consequence for sleeping around on your wife or your husband. Don't kid yourself. Okay, that's a fact. That's where the fear of the Lord is. There is a consequence. And Jesus is... Jesus talked about hell to his closest friends, his disciples, okay, to Christians, people that he loved. Do you know why he talked about hell so much? Because he doesn't want anyone to go there. That's a fact. That's why he went to the cross. He wants to save you. Okay? But don't kid yourself. There is a consequence to sin, okay? And if you're, oh, here I am, 30. And if your right eye causes you to sin, cut it out off and throw it away but for it is better that you lose one of your members than your whole body be go into hell do you think jesus was kidding was this some sort of metaphorical idea that he just threw out there because it really doesn't really count no this is sermon on the mountain this is the foundational biblical principles of christian life and Jesus says, it goes on to say that if you build your foundation on Jesus' teachings, the rock-solid teachings of Jesus, when a storm comes, okay, or a struggle comes, you will stand. But if you build your foundation on hyper-grace, roller coasters in your church, the age of Aquarius horoscope is Jesus. That is what's called sand. So when the disaster comes, when the storm comes, you will melt. That's a fact. You will not stand because you have accepted the teachings that are not Jesus, they use Bibles. And that's why my channel is they twist and distort the Bible, okay? And like I said, the biggest enemy of the church of God are these false prophets and false teachers standing in the pulpit teaching blasphemies. All right, here we go. Last scripture. This is the hope. One second. Man, this is supposed to be a quick video. All right, Galatians. We ourselves are... Jews by birth and not Gentile sinners. Yet we know that a person is not justified by works. There's relax in your salvation. Anything you do, okay, for the kingdom of heaven, or any, you can't God, get God to love you anymore. We can't strive to receive his love. He loves us. That's a fact. That's a fact. Okay. All right. We... we we will know that a person is not justified by works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. So we also have believing, believe in Christ Jesus in order to be justified by faith in Christ and not by works of the law. Because by works of the law, no one will be justified. 17. But, in, but if in our endeavor to be justified, justified in Christ, we too were found to be sinners, if Christ then a servant of sin, certainly not. For if I revealed what I tore down, I proved myself to be a transgressor. 
For through the law, I, transgressors like sin, okay, if you're breaking the God's laws. For through the law, I died to the law so that I might live to God. 20. I have been crucified with Christ. Praise the Lord. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Christianity is a life and life more abundantly. He has a plan and purpose for your life. Get If you're indulging in this stuff, get rid of it. Cut it off. I, I'll, I'll give you straight up. When I get back on my knees and call out to the Lord, forgive me, Father. I took my tablet and I smashed it. <laughs> I took all my electronics I smashed them all. <laughs> I went offline for, I think... I think like three years or two, two and a half, three years, I didn't have any smart devices. This is my, this is my first cell phone in like, I don't even know how many years. It isn't even, it's not even a, a touch screen. I treat sin and my salvation very serious. Now I have not been made perfect. I still struggle, okay? But I do everything I possibly can to resist the temptations and God always provides a way out, all right. 20. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Amen. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live in faith in the Son of God who loved me. God, Jesus loves you. I love you. And gave himself for me. 21. Now listen to this. I do not nullify the grace of God, for it is righteousness through the law that Christ died for no purpose. And that's the hope. Jesus has paid the price for your sins. He has paid the price for our, my sins. Now it is our job. The first thing Jesus said was in Matthew 4, 17, repent for the kingdom of heaven and heaven and is repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. That was 2,000 years ago. Even so much more, we should be living each life. Okay, if Jesus was coming, if I were to say you, Jesus is coming back in 20 minutes, okay? The very last thing that you should ever say is, ooh, I better uh, delete my browsing history. That's the last thing you should be saying, okay? Shouldn't have been cheating on my taxes and stealing from my boss. Maybe I shouldn't have told that lie. That's the last thing you should be saying. If I were to say to you right now, Jesus is coming back in 20 minutes, you say, praise the Lord. <laughs> because we are living our lives in abundant life here on earth in obedience to the Lord, filled with the Holy Spirit. If you're indulging in that secret sin, if you're walking down the wide path, you got a lot to be scared about. You should be fearful for your salvation. You should be fearful for your eternal consequence that's a fact you'll stand before god and, and and explain to jesus okay why you couldn't stop yourself from murdering people or lying from people or stealing from people or lusting with p okay that's a fact it's all the same in god's eyes glory be to god for the grace of god okay that brings salvation has appeared to all men teaching us to say no, no to ungodliness and worldly passions and living self-controlled upright godly lives in this present age titus 2 11. So Christ died for no purpose. I pray the Lord bless you. We find, I'll end with this one last scripture. You find it in 1 John 1, 8, 9. If we claim, if I were to claim, if you claim to be without sin, if I were to claim without be sin, uh, without sin, I deceive myself and the truth is not in me. But if I confess my sin, okay, if you confess your sin, Christ is, I'm going to say it again, forgive me. 1 John 1, 8, 9. If you claim to be without sin, you deceive yourself and the truth is not in you. But if you confess your sin, Jesus, Christ Jesus is faithful and just, okay, to forgive your sin and to purify you from all righteousness. I pray the Lord bless you. It's an interesting video. I, I felt it was very important that we touch base on this because it affects everyone, including myself, okay, including myself. I struggle every day, okay, and that's part of about being a Christian is that we live a life and life more abundantly, but that's how Jesus also taught us to pray. I'll, I'll close with this last scripture, forgive me. Um, our Father, it's the Our Father prayer, okay. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Okay, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. Okay, as we forgive about, as we forgive those who sin against us. And here it is, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Okay, lead us. We find that also in Galatians 5, 23, I think. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. We are Spirit-filled, Spirit-led people. Okay. And like I want to say, I'll end with this, is that the foundation of our teachings, the foundation of our faith is found in the Bible, the written word of God. Heaven and earth will pass away, but God's words are eternal. Ground yourself in the Bible. If you're struggling with sin, there is hope. There is life and life more abundantly. Get rid of it, okay? And the Lord will help you. I pray the Lord bless you. Keep you strong in the faith. And always remember, Brother John loves you. Bye.